Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Look Ahead to the week beginning Monday the 3rd of July with me, CMC Markets Market Analyst David Madden. Now it's fair to say t- next week is a fairly busy week in terms of announcements, uh, but it's also fair to say that the majority of the economic announcements are stacked towards the back end of the week. Turning our attention first of all to the Eurozone, we have service PMI numbers out from France, Germany, Italy and the Eurozone as a whole on Wednesday. Bearing in mind, on Wednesday the 28th of June, the European Central Bank had to clarify its stance uh, in terms of its monetary policy. They felt that Mr. Pre- Mr. Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank, was misinterpreted by the markets the previous day. Mr. Draghi had to clarify his positions by stating that he's content with the state of the economic growth in the Eurozone, but there's no need to actually change their economic policy and the monetary policy in the medium term. The indicators that are coming out on Wednesday will give us a flavor for how, how well, just how well the, the recovery in the Eurozone is going. Turning our attention to the United Kingdom, uh, we have some numbers out uh, next week. On Monday, we have some manufacturing numbers, ma- manufacturing PMI numbers out. On Wednesday, we have the service manufacturing service figures, service PMI numbers out, and on Friday, we have the manufacturing production numbers out from the UK. Uh, we also had a bit of a central banker U-turn from Mark Carney, the governor of the Bank of England, on Wednesday, the 28th of June, when Mr. Carney in complete shock to his speech the previous week, said the Bank of England could look to remove some of the stimulus it has in place. This flies in the face of what Mr. Carney said the week before when he strongly suggested uh, interest rates in the UK will not be moving any time soon. So the numbers out in terms of the service figures from the UK are going to be by far the most important seeing as the service sector in the UK accounts for the vast, for the much bigger proportion of the economy than manufacturing and manufacturing production. Finally, turning our attention to the United States of America, on Wednesday we have the Fed minutes out, uh, will, will be released at 7 p.m. That's going to be the Fed minutes covering the meeting uh, we saw in June when the interest rate was increased by 0.25%. Uh, we're also going to, this will give us an indication of what, what exactly the Federal Reserve are thinking. On Thursday, we have a number of important economic announcements from the United States. We have jobless claims at, at a half one. We have the ADP on employment numbers at 115. We also have the oil numbers at half three. Usually, the ADP numbers and the oil, oil inventory numbers from the U.S., come out on Wednesday, but because Tuesday is the 4th of July, a holiday in the United States, well, we're going to have the oil figures and the ADP figures out on the Thursday, which brings us around to the all-important Friday, the first Friday of the month, so that means non-farm payrolls. Now, let's just keep in mind regarding the US economy, unemployment is certainly heading in the right direction, uh, but what we have seen is a bit of a stagnation in terms of wage growth. So. As always with the, with the actual uh, non-farm payrolls announcement, we have the headline figure. We may or may not get a revision to the previous month's figure. We often get a, a, a revision. Uh, we, also keep, we also have the unemployment rate to watch out for, but we also have the wage growth numbers on a month-on-month basis and a year-on-year basis. Often you see scenarios whereby the market will jolt in a certain direction by looking at the headline figure. But sometimes that can actually be in contrast what we see with the revisions, the unemployment rate, and of course the wage data. So it is important to keep an eye on all the um, economic uh, announcements that are made from the United States at the time of the actual non-farm payrolls figure. Now, taking a look at some of the markets, uh, some of the more popular markets, starting off with the Eurozone. Uh, Let's just take a quick look at the single currency. It's, uh, it's, it's performed quite well in the last number of sessions, given uh, we have such a strong performance in the euro uh, on the back of Mr. Draghi's comments. Uh, we're, currently test- we're currently trading uh, just above 114 on the euro versus the US dollar. Bearing in mind, uh, this video is recorded on Thursday, the 29th of June, at uh, just gone midday. So some of the prices may change uh, may change. Um, in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the remainder of the week. 
the euro has is actually now trading at its highest level in about one year so it's very much uh, bullish um, and it's, it's, the sentiment is very much positive and it's very much bullish uh, should we should we make a decent hold up push beyond the resistance at 11428 uh, traders and then and buyers are then going to be looking towards 114.95. Any pullbacks in the euro versus the US dollar may get support in around the 113.28 region and then also the 113 the figure region. Bearing in mind uh, momentum has now actually turned positive on the on the daily chart, we could be looking at a, a bit of a further gains for the single currency. Turning our attention now to the pound versus the US dollar, seeing as Mr. Kearney uh, gave surprisingly hawkish commentary uh, on Wednesday the 28th of June, uh, we, we've seen a similar upwards move in the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, we're currently trading at 129.75. Uh, there's some resistance in around that region, uh, I believe it's 129.77, there's some resistance. Should we make a, a decent move beyond that, uh, traders and buyers will then be looking towards 130.47 and, and the resistance north of that again will be at 131.20. Pullbacks in the pound versus the US dollar may encounter support at the 50 day moving average which comes into play at 128.64 and below that at 128 the figure. Similar to the euro versus the US dollar on the daily chart the momentum has actually now turned positive and to the upside so we could see further gains for the pound versus the US dollar. Taking a look now at the price of oil, it's obviously been in the news quite a bit recently and looking ahead to next week we do have the uh, oil inventory figures coming out. The, the big picture for oil is clearly to the downside but we have seen the energy bounce back in, in, the, in, uh, in the last week or so. Levels to watch out for to the upside should this rally continue is going to be $48 uh, and then also resistance could come into play at $49. Likewise, uh, we are seeing a, a turnaround in the momentum which previously was negative for quite some time is now turning positive. There are several factors at play uh, with, the, you, with, with, the, with the oil market. A combination of a weak US dollar, um, a slight decline in oil production numbers from the United States and a feeling that the major sell-off we witnessed between late May and the middle of June was very much overdone. So for the time being, the momentum is clearly to the upside for oil, but should the oil market turn over on itself, which it has been doing in recent months, what we could see is a pullback. Uh, we, we could see oil heading, heading south yet again to 46.35. And should we move below that on Brent crude oil, the level to watch out for under that again will be 44.26. I'll just take one last look at, uh, at one last market to look at is gold, given that uh, it's, it's had the inverse relationship to the US dollar and come non farm payrolls, it's often quite uh, heavily traded. The gold market has been in, in a very clear uh, and, and fairly clear rise, a, a, a very clear upper trend. Since the, uh, since the middle of December 2016. But as we can see here, um, it's sort of in a consolidation area, which is, which is sort of trapped in between the 50-day moving average at 12.55 and gaining support from the 200-day moving average at 12.36. Looking at the kind of wider range uh, of, the, of, the, of the support line connecting the support from the May low, we are seeing gold See, trading in around um, the, the 12.50 level, which coincides with the trendline support connecting the low of May with the low of December. It's almost as if uh, the buyers and sellers are, are kind of jostling for control whether, whether, we're going to, whether we're going to move north back above the trendline support and continue the upward trend that we've been in since uh, mid-December or whether we we're actually going to now break below that support line. We've already traded through, through, through below it once, and I did manage to get support from the 200-day moving average at 12.36. Should we move south, and should we should we move below 12.36, the next level to watch out for to the downside in gold is going to be the low in May at 12.15. And uh, should we actually move to the upside in gold, uh, the, the, the level to watch out for to the first and foremost will be 12.80, and then beyond that, we'll be looking to the 2017 high of 1296 
So that is essentially a roundup of the major markets that major markets to watch out for, what, what we could see in terms of moves, uh, and bearing in mind by far the most important economic announcement from next week is going to be the non-farm payroll figure at half one on the Friday. And bearing in mind, uh, we are going to be having our, as always, our CMC Markets webinar covering the non-farm pay payrolls. Good luck trading. Have a good trading week and tune in next week. Thank you very much.